The generous poll promises made by the Congress party in Karnataka has certainly worked in its favour, but now it's time to count the cost for the Karnataka exchequer. And it isn't just about Karnataka. Given that the poll promises have worked, the temptation may be for Congress and other parties to follow the same formula. But uh, are parties cognizant of the cost of their promises and the state of state finances? Today I have with me one member of the Congress, Sir Rajiv, Professor Rajiv Gowda, the party's national spokesperson and chairperson of the Congress Research Department. In a bit, I'll also be joined by Mr. Sushil Modi of uh, the BJP. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get them together. Uh, Professor Gowda, first, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, first, have you all calculated the cost uh, of the poll promises? 2,000 rupees for every woman in each household, free power, 200 units, 10 kilos of uh, food grains. What's the bill? We've looked at 2,000 per month to women um, uh, women in households. There are about 1.3 crore households in Karnataka. Uh, so it works out to uh, 24,000 per year, about um, 31,200 crores. Um, Grahajyoti, which is the, um, in, in some sense, revenue foregone. You're not charging people for 200 units of electricity a month. A lot of people actually only use about 50 to 70 units. So um, uh, the overall um, cost of that would be about 5,000 crores. Um, Anna Bhagya is a continuation of a program that we had uh, launched during the Sidramaya government, where we were providing uh, rice to families at um, at a low, very, very low cost. And now um, we're talking about uh, 10 kgs mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, you know. So, so if you take one crore families below the poverty line, average two and a half people, ten kgs of grain. Um, yeah. So basically, about four thousand five hundred crores there. Now, the unemployment benefits. Yes. There are about five lakh unemployed youth, mm -hmm. uh, according to the CMIE data. Now, you must remember that this is, um, you know, in fact, it's even worse because um, unemployment measures those who are looking for a job. Actually, if you look at what's happened in Karnataka over the last few years, you've seen the labor force participation rate drop from 50% to 38%. People are so discouraged, they're not even trying. They're not even looking. And so we really have to do something like this to help uh, people, uh, graduates and diploma holders and others, to uh, pick themselves up and find a job. And so that's about, uh, you know, say about 27,000 rupees okay. per um, um, person. For about half a crore people, not even half a crore, 0. 0.05 crore people, so about 1,350 crores. Mm. And then um, free bus travel in uh, public transport for women. Um, if you say 27 rupees per passenger, about 25 lakh passengers per day across all uh, road transport corporations, you're probably looking at about 2,500 crores. So everything works out to a total of about 45,000 crores. Now, before you ask me further questions, <laughs> let me remind you about something called Keynesian economics, mm -hmm. where we put money in the hands of people when they are hurting. That ends up creating a multiplier impact when they spend yes. that money and that generates yes. growth in the economy. And Karnataka has always been a you know, fairly high growth economy. Mm. I think we've also managed our um, fiscal resources so very for carefully sure, for over sure. time. Uh, the last budget, uh, the FI24 budget, was actually a, a revenue surplus of about 400 crores. But uh, the fiscal deficit is a little over 60,000 crores, and that's 2.6% of uh, the mm -hmm. uh, GSDP of Karnataka. Now, will you not cross that 3% uh, uh, Lakshman Rekha with this added 45,000 crore? Uh, yes, we get uh, very, very close to doing that. There are ways of managing, I'm sure. But uh, the basic point is, these, these are all measures that are absolutely necessary. These are, you know, you said we are being very generous in our promises. We are being empathetic. We are paying attention to people's pain and we are working to alleviate that pain. No, I take your point, sir. I mean, nobody can argue against empathy. But the point is uh, you can only serve what is there in the pan. 
and uh, hence the question you know karnataka is the, actually the richest large state i mean if you exclude delhi chandigarh sikkim uh, goa in terms of large state it is the richest state the per capita income of karnataka is 71% higher than the average per capita income of the country if you go with this kind of a uh, promise uh, uh, platform in karnataka should we expect that congress would be even more generous in chatisgarh uh, uh, rajasthan and madhya pradesh who who are also going to the polls in a few months and there uh, the per capita income is lower than the national per capita income should we see a uh, you know block copy over there copy paste so if you if you recall we had come up with a program called nyai mm -hmm. um, you know sort of um, uh, for the bottom 20% of nation of uh, the nation's families we had proposed to give them 72000 rupees per year or uh, 6000 rupees per month and that uh, we were not able to implement uh, because we did not come to office in to, uh, 2019 mm -hmm. but these are all in some sense uh, reflecting the spirit of nyai uh, the spirit spirit of inclusion that we want to emphasize and so we reject the term freebie we think of these as investments in our people's uh, you know all around health and welfare so, so I, you yeah, probably I, will see you probably I, will see similar programs attuned to the realities of each state and their own fiscal bandwidth as well i come back to the point that we can uh, you know we have to cut the uh, uh, the shirt according to the cloth we have and uh, uh, in Rajasthan and uh, uh, other states, there is also the uh, 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 preference for the old pension scheme. That would bring its own expenses in the years to come, if not immediately. Uh, the, uh, Irida has clearly said they are not going to release the money that's already been uh, put in the new pension scheme, which means, okay, you may get some relief now, but that expense will also come in. And plus these expenses... Uh, th there are power problems for uh, the MP state and uh, uh, Rajasthan. At least Karnataka doesn't have those problems. You know, you can only do that much in a 3% fiscal deficit. So do you think that you are endangering the fisc in the states? Uh, I wouldn't really think so. I think in Karnataka, we are, you know, cutting our suit uh, according to the cloth that we have or, and our estimate of how much cloth we think we will be having. We are also um, uh, confident that some of these measures, for example, if we can uh, generate growth, partly to, through this Keynesian infusion of resources in every family's home, just imagine if the rural economy picks up, the rural demand picks up. Uh, yeah, I mean, the kind of benefit that will provide to FMCG companies, to two-wheeler manufacturers, a whole, whole bunch of things like that. And the kind of job creation, if we are able to turn around, then the unemployment benefit will be phased out. I mean, it, it, you won't need to spend on that. If we generate you know, through public, private and other innovative measures, uh, more energy projects, we are already an energy surplus state. We did uh, under DK Shukumar, when he was energy minister, we launched this mega solar project without acquiring land through partnerships with farmers. So we have ways of doing more, which will ensure that some of these uh, issues uh, will not really bother us. Okay. It, we will be able to implement. And then if you look at administrative convenience, this whole business, you know, Mr. Bomai said that he had also announced, uh, you know, free bus travel for working women and students. Well, they, that would have entailed going and getting passes and a whole bunch of other things. Now it is very simple. Okay. We also need administrative simplicity, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's very considerate, uh, Professor Gorda, but I'm not sure it's affordable. But thank you very much for your quick word. We have to take a break. And thereafter, Mr. Sushil Modi, the Rajya Sabha MP and former Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, senior BJP leader, joins us.